If you're anything like me, sometimes after a hard day at the office, you need to go in the backyard and just relax. You grab your favorite beverage. You go to where nobody's really paying attention to what you're doing. At least you hope not. You look in both directions. You walk back over there to that table. You smell the roses. There aren't any roses in here, but what is there? Wait for it. That looks like a fiberglass stick and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. There's a wire attached to it. This is an HF amateur radio antenna, and it's here hiding in plain sight in the backyard at the HOA. Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA ham. That's right, I live in a homeowners association and I'm glad that I do. It's the whole purpose for my channel existing. Yes, I do lots of reviews on amateur radio gear, but I spend an equally important amount of time helping others understand how they can adapt to the requirements around them following the spirit of the rules, but still being able to get on the air. That's what amateur radio is all about adapting to our circumstances. We do it on POTA, SOTA, and MCOM every day of the week. What you see is just a make-believe table. I couldn't sit there and have dinner. It might fall over. I mocked it up to give you an illustration of what you might be able to do on your back porch. Take my idea, use it as a springboard to be able to operate where you live in spite of your restrictions. While I finish spreading out the four radials from that planter box holding up the table, I mean, don't you have radials in your planter box? I want to say thanks to channel sponsor G Gable Radio, my favorite Amazon retailer of amateur radio gear. They're the manufacturer and distributor of the 7350T lightweight portable vertical HF antenna. I'll leave a link in the description below. Today I'm going to give you the principles of how I pulled this off, the basic construction of this setup, how I hid the antenna. This might not be applicable to all of you. It won't be applicable to all of you. Because I pulled this up in the middle of the day, I'm no longer hiding in plain sight. The antenna is sitting there on the backyard, ready for me to go use it when I want to and when I can be stealth. And for me, if I had a lot of people watching what I was doing, that would be as the sun goes down, I put that pole up. No one sees it. I can operate to my heart's content through the evening and into the morning. For those of you who have lots of property, you don't even need a table to hide it. You can put a mast like this up in your backyard, no problem. Of course, if you don't have an HOA, you can do this anytime you want. Some of you are even more restrictive and this doesn't fit. Again, remember, I'm trying to give you ideas. This is not a one size fits all. Think about what I'm doing and then ask yourself, how can I adapt that to my particular situation? Here's the gear we're using for this particular video. I'm using a spider beam mast. I think this is a 40 foot heavy duty fiberglass pole. I'm using the Poseidon, which is a Ribicoff type antenna from Coffee and Ham Radios. And although I have my Whisper, my Zactech Whisper transmitter on the screen, and you must understand, my OCD is bothered by this, right? It's upside down, but based on where the wires need to go right now, I can't turn this right side up. You have no idea how much that's causing me to twitch. But these are the things that are used in this video, along with this particular mount that comes from Chameleon Antenna. It's part of their Portamast system. You won't believe how many ways I have found to use this thing that have nothing to do with the Portamast. It's integral to the base that's holding this antenna. And in the future, I'll do a whole build video on how I created that base, because that base is going to show up in video after video after video, helping you find new ways to operate in the HOA. It shouldn't be a surprise to any of you if you hear me say I like all antennas, be they commercially manufactured and distributed, homebrew, kits, I'm a fan of anything that gets you on the air, whether it's for emergency communications or recreation, I'm a fan of trying to advance the ham way of life and helping you get there. I've started using whisper maps to help me understand propagation, as well as test antenna setup configuration and deployment. We'll talk more about that later, but here is the whisper map on this particular backyard coffee table installation at the HOA. To set this up, I essentially started with a piece of plywood that was sitting on the shelf in the garage and cut it in a circle 36 inches in diameter. And then I took this piece of PVC. This is electrical 
conduit. And wouldn't you know it, electrical conduit and schedule 40 plumbing for residential use, they don't match up. Imagine that. I surmise there's a reason for that. They don't want us using these interchangeably. But that toilet flange, yep, that's a toilet flange that I'm screwing to the underside of the plywood table. And that electrical conduit does not fit in there perfect. It's not a snug fit, so I had to screw these two together. But the inside of that electrical conduit allows me to fit my spider beam mast in here, and that's why I used this specifically. So let's finish this build process and let me tell you the additional things I did to get this on the air. The electrical conduit fits perfectly inside that porta mast mount, that's why I chose it specifically. And you can see here at the top of the table, I have that hole cut in so that the wire floats freely inside that conduit because we want to be able to sit our spider beam in here. We don't want the spider beam rubbing against the wire. We want the wire to be able to free flow. And so with that hole that I cut at the bottom, or I should say drilled at the bottom, the wire can now free flow as I extend the mast. The wire is not being crimped, pressed, bent by the spider beam inside the electrical conduit. Taking a dollar store flower pot, cutting a hole in the bottom, that allowed me to keep my wire there. And then of course, if you just look from one side to the other here slowly, I already have the mast fully deployed, 25, 26 feet in the air. And you can just see how this works from one side to another. Here's a still of the hole that I drilled at the bottom of that conduit so the radiator can come out and connect to the antenna. Here's a picture on the right hand side of my four radio wires going out into the yard. And here's a view a little bit further back so you can kind of see the entire application. Let's get an aerial view of this. In my HOA, I would have to put this up either very short term and use it and take it back down or operate at night so no one really starts to pay attention to me. I don't want attention here in the HOA. If you live at a place like this and you have those tall leafy things in your backyard, those are your best friends. That's nature's antenna mast. And if you have those in your backyard, that's where you should be flying your antenna. The bottom line question here, my friend, is does this thing get on the air? Can you actually take some type of setup like this and operate. I think what you're failing to see is this is just a normal antenna setup. You would be doing this at POTA, SOTA, MCOM, anywhere that you could get up a mast and an antenna. I just happened to disguise it with a gimmick. The gimmick doesn't impact the capability of this antenna in any way, shape, or form. Let's get a look at it right now on 20, 40, and 80, and then I'll show you some final band-by-band -band whisper maps. Kilo Delta 4, Romeo, K4R, calling CQ contest and listening. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf, 5-9, Fulton. 5-9, Tampa, Florida. Thank you very much for the contact, 73. 73, have a blast. Thank you. QRZ, Kilowatt 4, Romeo. Many of my videos take place over days, weeks, and months, and occasionally I suffer the failure that all YouTubers fear, not having the camera rolling when you thought you did. I missed my QSO with a gentleman in New Hampshire on 40, but I can just illustrate it like this. Because of my rather small backyard, my station reference antenna is fantastic on the upper bands, it's not so great on 40, and I just don't get 80. With this particular setup in the backyard, 40 was quite strong for me. My waterfall never looks like this, and when I jump over to 80 for just a couple of seconds so you can hear the quality of the transmissions, I just don't see waterfalls like that. This antenna pulled it off. Looks to me like maybe I just need to put this up in the dark many times, because when else would I be operating 80? I just recently purchased and began using this dedicated ZachTech Whisper desktop transmitter, and I'm using it to understand propagation patterns and test antenna performance. This purchase was made possible by the patrons of the HOA Ham channel who have some discretionary income and like the services that I'm offering to the ham community. There's a link in the description below if you too want to join that group. Here's a quick look at the screen settings on that transmitter. You just tell it what port you're communicating on, the serial port that is, choose the whisper beacon, 
select the bands that you want to transmit on for testing and just let it rock and roll. And before you know it, you have all of these whisper maps so you can check out the performance on the various bands. Although the Poseidon Ribicoff antenna I'm testing wasn't designed for 80, I thought, why not give it a look at 80 meters? 40 meters, I'm pretty happy with that whisper map. 30 meters, wow. Look at that north-south propagation as well as east-west. 20 meters, listen, from where I am, I never have problems into Europe and 20 meters just crushed it into Europe. 17 meters is looking pretty healthy. 15, 12, 10, and then a map of 80 through 10. Whisper stands for Weak Signal Propagation Report, and the Zactec unit was pumping out 200 milliwatts for 24 hours to give us these graphs. 200 milliwatts, that converts over to 0.2 watts. Truly weak signal. I'll do a demonstration of this on the channel sometime in the future in the event you're interested in this. It does require the ability to pick up a GPS satellite signal. So if you can't get that from somewhere inside your home, you might not be able to use this unit. My GPS unit is about 10 feet away from the window. I'm still picking up a signal. I was surprised I was able to do that. It can be operated independent of your transceiver. Let me rephrase that. It is to be operated independent of your transceiver. You can operate it independent of your computer once you do initial setup. I'm a proponent for setting up the best performing antenna in the operating conditions you find yourself in and that your money can afford, whether that's a commercial grade, a kit, or homebrew. Don't mistake my gimmick for being sloppy. In the HOA, sometimes you have to make compromises. Maybe you can only operate at night, so you need to hide this thing in the daytime and do it in such a way that it's easy to get to later. And maybe you don't need to do a temporary setup like me. Maybe you have an actual picnic table in the backyard that with the right type of hole cut in it, the right type of base, you could just have this thing sitting out there permanently ready to erect in a matter of minutes. If you don't have the restrictions of the HOA, that is freaking fantastic. This operation and this setup works just as good for you as it does somebody hiding in the HOA. Only you get to do it in broad daylight. Take advantage of every opportunity you have, but don't think that just because you live in an HOA, you can't play ham radio. You absolutely can. Some of you have more restrictive circumstances than what I've shown here. Some of you have less restrictive circumstances. I hope this helps you springboard to ideas that are the most useful to you. I had fun with this one. I hope you did as well, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.